Hello, everyone. Thanks as always for joining us on another episode of Trails We Hike. Well, you can see we're here at the Calaveras Big Trees Visitor Center. Got our map. Let's check out what we're going to do here. So, Visitor Center, North Grove. That's what we're going to do. So, we're here at the Visitor Center. And this is our trail here. We're going to hit this North Grove Big Trees Trail. Just follow it all the way around. Back down. We're actually parked down here anyway at the Jack Memorial uh, Hall. So if your buddy's got married down there. Pretty cool. So go down there and yeah, we'll check it out. Should be really nice. Let's see what the visitor center's got going on. The park is located off Highway 4, just north of Arnold, California. After Jim gets his traditional trinket from the shop, we head out to the North Grove. Let's get on the trail. Just up this way. Calaveras Big Tree State Park has been the longest continuously run tourist attraction in California, dating back to 1852. It was designated as a state park in 1931 and has over a thousand giant mature sequoias between both the North and South Groves. idea why sequoias are the largest living things on earth. That thing is enormous. These uh, individual trees can live about 3,000 years or so, a little bit longer, but uh, they actually, the genomes, they go back 180 million years. So not only the largest, but they, they've been around a while. Although we'll see many of the amazing attractions Big Trees has to offer, unfortunately, we won't be walking through the famous Pioneer Cabin Tree. The harsh winter, while desperately needed here in California, brought down the tree just this year. So this here is not a fallen tree, or cut tree, but a limb for that guy. But also the bark goes up, it kind of spirals up, that gives it more strength. Okay. Look at those trees up there, are they huge? Alright. This this is called the Siamese twin tree. Do you see that burn scar in between? Now, what happens when fires come through, a branch will fall or something will happen in a burn in between the two trees, the bark will also grow over those burn scars. So eventually, maybe in a hundred years, when you come back to visit the forest, that, burn, that bark will have covered up the burn scar. Oh yeah. Oh my gosh. Very cool. These are beasts. You can see now those limbs that I was pointing out earlier. You can see that how that was a, a limb, not a tree. You can look up and go, yeah, those are tree trunks on top. <laughs> big tree? That Where? Sign, that sign does not lie. It is a big tree. Oh, there. That's, <laughs> I must be that one. Not so much in this area, 
or over here, but right in here. <laughs> what they say is that these are probably the same age. Um, the mother tree has had better conditions than the sun tree. The mother tree gets a lot more morning sun. Her roots are probably growing out and getting more water. The sun tree's top of the tree fell off, so it's not getting as much um, nutrients and as it needs to grow. Another spot that we saw but didn't make it into the episode was the discovery tree, or the big stump. It was thought to be the largest tree in the park when European discoverers first came upon the land in the early 1850s. It was then cut down to advertise the tourist attraction and measure 25 feet in diameter at the base. It's believed the giant sequoia was over 1,200 years old when it was felled. This tree came down, they think about 1850s, 1852, 1853. Pretty cool. I don't know if you guys have heard talking about how the fire was in the middle of there and then the park just grew around the fire scar. Adults, and they said children. They didn't say anything about man children. Man child. <laughs> well, we'll give it a shot. Anyway. That was the father of the forest that Jim and I just walked through. And now, as Jim points out some blooming dogwood, we make our way towards the mother of the forest, the second sequoia to be used for marketing purposes here in the park. of what it looked like at the Crystal Palace when it was in London. Well, they took it to San Francisco. It was a great hit. They took it to New York. P.T. Barnum was gone by then, so it was a great hit there. And then they took it to London and they had it displayed in the Crystal Palace for about 10 years. And then eventually the Crystal Palace burned down and the tree burned down. But during that period of time, a lot of people saw the tree and they were they were very impressed and a lot of people started coming out here and they wanted to see these giant sequoia trees. Many people started donating money to protect these trees. The, Red, the Redwood League spent a lot of money and they bought North, the North Grove in 1932, bought the South Grove in 1952. The South Grove is the other grove of trees in this park. Eventually, all 95% of the giant sequoias are now in protected areas. 
And that is because of this tree and the stump. The stump our interpretive guide was referring to is the aforementioned big stump, the only thing remaining of the discovery tree. While it's sad to think of how these mammoths were taken down and stripped while they had been living for over a thousand years at the time, their sacrifice was not in vain. Because of the treatment of those trees, now over 6,000 acres of land where these beauties reside is protected, ensuring the rest will live as long as possible. Nearing the end of our hike, we were feeling pretty upbeat about a trip we had forgotten our tripod for. The North Grove Trail is only about a one and a half mile loop with essentially no climbing. This is a great hike for any experience level given that fact and the fact that there are benches throughout. Here we're coming up on the iconic Pioneer Cabin tree that unfortunately came down this past winter. Yeah, with a tree. Want to give me a hand? Yeah, I'll, just, I'll get on the far end, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> I got some paracord. It's a nine strand, so I think we're going to be okay. <laughs> While we no longer have the opportunity to walk through the Pioneer Cabin tree, you can still get an idea of just how enormous these sequoias are. The age of this tree is still uncertain, but the size is undeniable. This giant sequoia is about 33 feet in diameter, and you can still see the tunnel cut out right there in front of us. Jim notices another great example of the oak tree sized limbs these things carry around. theme is the Mount Diablo episode, right? Can't take things for granted. So what's a, what's a good new YouTube channel lately? What's like a, what's a hiking channel maybe you found in the last month or two that stands out to you and um, why does it stand out? Uh, you know, I've been watching more of is Huck Outdoors. Uh, he's been doing it for a while, but I just found him, found his channel not that long ago. Uh, He's down in Southern California somewhere, does a lot of desert trips, goes out to Palm Springs area, Joshua Tree, stuff like that. And I think what is really cool about it is he finds all these amazing spots. I just, I don't know, I just assumed, I never really spent a whole lot of time down there in the desert. So I, I was just shocked at the amount of cool things. And then like these little oases, all these little water trips that he goes to in the desert, it's pretty, it's pretty neat. He does great stuff too, really cool channel, really cool stuff, he's got a great group of guys. There's, I don't know, there's probably about four or five YouTube channels in their little hiking group. So you get a lot of different perspectives from the trips too, it's really fun. Uh, really cool stuff, really good stuff, really cool channel, good guys. Huck Outdoors, check I don't think I've checked them out, I think I'll have to do that. Yeah. But before you guys go check it out, hit that thumbs up and leave any questions or comments below. And of course, if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe and follow along with us on the trails we hike. It's a good day.